sound. Okay, let's go with that. Hello, boys and girls. Hello. Yeah, Gobo says hello too. And today we're going to, what? You don't know what we're going to do? No. Well, today we are going to read a book. Oh yeah? Yeah. We're going to read a book together. We love reading books. Yeah. Oh. What do you see? Uh, I saw a bird. You saw a bird? Oh, yeah. There's a blackbird. Looks like a crow. A crow. Yeah. Actually, you know, the book that we're reading today is kind of like in the same style as you would think of a black crow in an October evening, dark skies, maybe rainy. Bobo, I'm scared. Oh, well, you don't have to be scared. No? No. October is a wonderful month. It might rain a bit and, be, and get darker. And really dark. Sometimes it can get really dark, but it's wonderful. The season, the seasons change, and so we get different types of weather and stuff. And in the month of October, we also get a celebration. Oh, I know. You know what I'm gonna say? Uh, Christmas. No, not Christmas. Christmas is not celebrated in the month of October. It's celebrated in the month of December. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we do celebrate something else in October. Hmm. Can you think of what it is? Do you know what it is? Do you know what which holiday we might celebrate in the month of October? I think I know. He thinks that he knows. Well, say it then. What do you think? Halloween? Yes! Halloween! And today we're going to read a book. Well, it's not a Halloween book, but it's in the same spirit. All right? So get comfortable, sit tight, and then we're going to go and get that book. Okay? See you soon. See you in a minute. Okay, well, you just get settled nicely in there. Okay, oh, can, can I sit here? Yeah, you can sit right there. And where's my blanket? Your blanket is there. Put that, yeah, right there. Okay, I think I'm ready. All right, I'm glad that you're ready. I've got my book ready. Oh, hey, nice to see you again. Well, Gobo is all set in his little spot on the carpet, and I have the book that I was talking about before. It's called Pumpkin Soup by Helen Cooper. And actually, I bought this book a while ago, and it came with a CD. Do you even, even know what a CD is? Hmm. It plays music. It's like a little disc that plays music on it. And this says, includes a story CD read by Simon Russell Beale. And it's really superb. But today, I'm going to be reading this book to you. So, here we go. Pumpkin Soup by Helen Cooper. <gasps> Ooh, look at that. Mmm. I'm just imagining what that's going to taste like because I'm going to make some pumpkin soup myself today. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had pumpkin soup? If you've never had pumpkin soup, well, I would highly recommend it. It's delicious. Let's go. Deep in the woods, there's an old white cabin with pumpkins in the garden. There's a good smell of soup. And at night, with luck, you might see a bagpiping cat through the window, and a squirrel with a banjo, and a small singing duck. So cute. Pumpkin soup, the best you ever tasted. Made by the cat who slices up the pumpkin. Made by the squirrel who stirs in the water. Made by the duck who scoops up a pipkin of salt and tips in just enough. They're busy working there, aren't they? They slurp their soup and play their song, then pop off to bed in a quilt stitched together by the cat, embroidered by the squirrel, and filled with fine feathers from the duck. 
and it's peaceful in the old white cabin. Everyone has his own job to do. Everyone is happy, or so it seems. Hmm. So far, children, I think that they've done a superb job of helping one another with all their chores. Will they continue? But one morning, the duck woke up early. He tiptoed into the kitchen and smiled at the squirrel's special spoon. Wouldn't it be fine, he murmured, if I could be the head cook? He drew up a stool, hopped on top, and reached until his beak just touched the tip of the spoon. Ker-plunk, down it clattered. Then the duck trotted back to the bedroom, held up the spoon, and said, Today it's my turn to stir the soup. Oh, <gasps> that sounds like a bossy little duck, if you ask me. That's mine, the squirrel, the, squeaked the squirrel. Stirring's my job. Give that back. You're much too small, snapped the cat. We'll cook the way we always have. But the duck held on tight until the squirrel tugged with all his might. And whoops, the spoon spun through the air and bopped the cat on the head. Then there was trouble, a horrible squabble, a row, a racket, a rumpus in the old white cabin. Oh my goodness, look at that, boys and girls. <gasps> that is just terrible to see friends fighting like that, so violently too. I'm not staying here, wailed the duck. You never let me help with anything. And he packed up a barrow, put on his hat, and waddled away. You'll be back, stormed the cat, after we've cleaned up. And the squirrel shook a spoon in the air. But the duck didn't come back. Not for breakfast, not even for lunch. I'll find him, scoffed the cat. He'll be hiding outside. I bet he's in the pumpkin patch. But the duck was not in the pumpkin patch. They could not find him anywhere. Can you find him? Can you find any other creatures? Oh, ooh, I see some things going on over here. So they waited all that long afternoon. The cat watched the door. The squirrel paced the floor. That duck will be sorry when he comes home, they muttered. But the duck didn't come home, not even at soup time. The soup wasn't tasty. They made it too salty. They didn't feel hungry anyway. They both sobbed over supper and their tears dripped into the soup and made it even saltier. We should have let him stir the soup, sniffed the squirrel. He was only trying to help, wept the cat. Let's go and look for him. The cat and the squirrel were scared as they wandered down the path in the dark woods, in the dark, dark woods. They feared for the duck all alone with the trees and the foxes and the wolves and the witches and the bears, but they couldn't find him. On and on they trotted. They reached the edge of a steep cliff. Maybe he fell down that, wailed the cat. I'll save him, squeaked the squirrel, and he scrambled down the long, shaky rope. He searched all around on the ground, but he couldn't find the duck. At least he didn't fall. Then the cat whispered in a sad little voice, Duck might have found some better friends. He might yelped the squirrel, friends who let him help. And the more they thought about it as they plodded back, the more they were sure they were right.
But when they were almost home, they saw light shining from the old white cabin. Oh, it's Duck, they shrieked, and they burst through the door. And Duck was so pleased to see them. He was also very hungry, and though it was late, they thought they would all make some pumpkin soup. When the duck stirred, the cat and the squirrel didn't say a word. Not even when the duck stirred the soup so fast that it slopped right out of the pot. Not even when the pot got burnt. Then the duck showed the squirrel how to measure out the salt. And the soup was still the best you ever tasted. So once again, it was peaceful in the old white cabin. Until the duck said, I think I'll play the bagpipes now. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. The end. So that was our story, our little read aloud today by Miss Helen Cooper and her beautiful book called Pumpkin Soup. Do we recommend this book? Oh, yes, we do. And we hope that you had a lovely time watching this with us. All right, Gobo, would you like to come up here and say goodbye? Oh, yeah. Okay, come up here. All right, there we go. So, uh, I, I like the story. You like the story? Yeah, it's a little scary. Yeah, I have to say there might have been a few parts that were a little bit scary. Yeah. But um, you know, we you you stayed strong and you listened. I did. Yes, you did. And in the end, you were fine. Yeah, I was I'm 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 brave. Yes, you're brave. Very brave. So, boys and girls, we hope that you have a nice time. We'll get back to you soon with a little project. Ooh. Yeah, we love little activities. A little project for you to do at home or in class. Bye-bye.